All right, baby, and we're back on the Cooligans Living Room FC, and Christian, our guest, is finally here. I can't. I'm I'm quite excited. This is uh, someone who we've been wanting to talk to for years uh, yeah. at this point, and we did get we did get to meet once. I believe I, I believe it was at a United Soccer Coaches Convention, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Uh, and you were like, "Yo, we should introduce ourselves, comedians with the show." And I'm like, "Let me go first, so I could sneak in some startup pitches." You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're looking. Obviously, we got a great idea. We're looking for investors. Right. Uh, uh, you know, how do you I, feel about lightly illegal? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's the name of the company. All right. <laughs> Right? We're not shying away from it. Yeah. I think that's how you fool the feds. Yeah. You lean in harder. Uh, but this dude, uh, you know, if you know anything about American soccer, you've seen this dude's name. Um, you've seen the brand name of his uh, soccer club. You probably don't know where they're, where they're based in, right? You, you're like, why do you start a club in Jamaica, right? Like, you, you, you're not 100% sure, but you've seen the logo. You know the name. He's in every photo of every major event before the lockdown. Uh, so we're finally happy to have him here, ladies and gentlemen, the owner of Kinston Starcade, the one, the only, Dennis Crowley, everybody. Hey, what's up? That's quite the uh, quite the intro. I'm here to hear more about lightly illegal. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even kidding. I do have an idea that of that's. I've asked six lawyers. Three have said, I don't know. And other three are like, I think you can get away with it. I'll take in the commercial break. <laughs> because, because this lightly illegal idea is heavily illegal. Uh, okay. <laughs> just Let's just clear. say the three lawyers that said, I think you can get away with it. We're all. <laughs> Also in basement offices. So uh, you tell me if you're still into it. Dennis, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Like I did say, we've been uh, hoping to speak to you for a long time because especially when we started, uh, when the sh- before it was a TV show and the Cool Games was just a podcast, you were a, a, a name who came up uh, often, especially when we were uh, realizing and learning how much is in- involved and invested at the at the you know, the foundation of American soccer uh, yeah. and, and with, with Kingston Stockade. So I, I want to just talk a little bit about your uh, participation in this and, and wanting to be a part of American soccer in this particular way. And then we'll get into, you know, trying to disrupt the system uh, <laughs> yeah. in some way. But but what 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 led to you wanting to get involved in the game this deeply? Because you're known for making money. Why would you want to lose money <laughs> in American soccer? I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was, it was all about losing money. In the beginning, in the beginning it was, just, it was me and my buddies were, were in a um, you know five aside league in the in the city in, in New York City, and you know just just um, we're out after a match. I'm sure we lost. You know, having beers, and there was this conversation about like what would have to happen for our club, which which was called Alphabet City, to play the Red Bulls, for example. Like yeah. you know, because people knew about the Open Cup, we didn't really know how it worked and how you'd qualify and the league structure. And, you know, the next day I just kind of fell down this internet rabbit hole of like lower division soccer and was thinking like, we, we should make one of these, like, we're good at building stuff. Uh, let's, let's build a club. And, you know, long story short, we ended up building it in, in, um, in Kingston, New York, which is about two hours north of New York City in the Hudson Valley. Uh, my wife and I have a house up there. It turns out there was a, a, like a stadium that's very, very lightly used. It hasn't been renovated in years, which calls our, our you know, that's now our home stadium. Uh, and it's just been it's been awesome. It's been a, a fantastic experience building this thing from scratch. And then as we were going through the work to build it, we kind of had the idea of like, why don't we just write about this thing? Let's build it, build it in public. Let's write about everything we did right, everything we did wrong, every question we have, every question that goes unanswered. Let's share all the financials. Let's share all the data that we have in, in the hopes that it will make it easier for the next person to come along um, and, and start a club from scratch. And, and that's exactly what it's done. It's just kind of like. Just you know, it's it's become like a, a some of our work has become a little bit like an instruction manual, like yeah, yeah. To, a blueprint. Your own soccer team, how to create your first soccer team, and it's yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Do you need a shirt sponsor? Because lightly illegal needs ways to funnel money. Uh, <laughs> we need to hide the funds. Um, when you look at the manifesto that you put out that specifically yeah. said year one, here's what we did. I remember reading and you were like, I washed the jerseys. I'm like, no, he dang, he's rich. But <laughs> yeah, you're taking your Tesla back and forth to the laundry. Get out of here. But uh, when you look at that, do, has anyone reached out to you? Have you inspired more clubs to open? And it, do do they blame you? you know? uh, yeah. I, I remember that. You know, the, 
after we publish that first um, that first piece, going into it, like an NPSL meeting, we play in the league called the NPSL, and go into the owners meeting, and there was a mixed reaction of like, what are you doing, telling people how much it costs to do this, and other people being like, this is great, it's gonna it's gonna make it more accessible. I, I wasn't really sure. But, you know, in, with a couple years hindsight, it's, it's totally clear that it made it much more accessible for people to say, oh, I can do this on like a, you know, $30,000, $50,000 a budget. Like I can, I, I can run, you know, 12, 14 home games and still do this and, and start this platform. It's not going to bankrupt me. You know, like I think just, just saying the part aloud about like it doesn't have to lose money. It probably won't make money, but your goal should be to get to break even. And it might take you a couple of years to do that. That just, it just level sets expectations. And, you know, it's the same thing like what's with, you know, I come from a tech startup world. When people talk about like what works and what doesn't and what's easy and hard and, and tech startups or management or whatever, it just makes it easier for the next person to come around and do it. And, you know, there's tons of business books and tons of startup books. And what we found when we started Kingston Stockade was like, you know, I went on the Internet and Googled. How do you start a stalker team from scratch? And there was nothing. You know, it's yeah. like, well, let's let's fill the void with our own stuff. And, and we know now in hindsight, it's, it's like, you know, I, I probably do a call a week still, even in quarantine times of, of people somewhere in the world that want that want to do a club. I'm talking to this guy um, from Rome uh, later this week. I have no idea who he is. He's reached out to LinkedIn. I'm like, sure, I'll make half an hour to talk to you. <laughs> Um, you know, we'll never play you. I'll never see a match probably. But like, if I can help him go from this is impossible to like, oh yeah, maybe I can do this. Then that's great. Yeah. How yeah. the hell did it take us so long to get you on the show? <laughs> Some <laughs> random in Rome. <laughs> I'll be on every day if you want me. <laughs> the, uh, uh, th that is a uh, uh, wild, like, I mean, and you did also mention the, the, the tech background. Obviously you are uh, a founder of Foursquare, uh, uh, which is a, a, a huge company, you know, you, where you see, you see them everywhere. Um, the, how does, you know, I come from a computer science background and it, uh, so, you know we're let's let's talk uh, right look at look at i'm finally glad i got to see these two peers <laughs> you know okay i've uh, replaced a couple motherboards in my life uh, hey now <laughs> dirty talk oh that's a computer part <laughs> you oh. someone like you at lightly illegal <laughs> Okay, uh, but the uh, the the knowledge and experience that you've gained from the tech world uh, it, it's starting to feel a little bit like soccer is becoming the new tech boom in some in some strange way. Is there um, the, the 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 knowledge and experience that you've gained from uh, you know and in in that business? How has do you, how do you feel like it, it's helped in in soccer? Yeah, I think it, like the, the probably the, the one big thing is that like it's really hard to it's really hard to make something from scratch. And you know, Foursquare is my my second tech company, and in each time it, you've got this like imp, impossible amount of stuff to build, and you just do a little bit of it every day. And it was kind of the same thing with the with building Stockade. It's like I don't even know how much stuff there is to do. Like we were really naive, thinking like, oh, there's got to be ten things. You buy some kits, you hire a coach, and have tryouts, right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it, it turns out there's a laundry list of a thousand things you got to do. And you know, after after building things that are big, you kind of get used to like, oh, well, this is probably a big thing. Let's just break it down into a hundred parts, and we'll do one part every day for a hundred days. And then you're like, oh, wow, look at this, we made some yeah. progress. And I think that that's that's really the big thing. It's, it's identifying a big opportunity, you know, breaking it down into a set of like smaller problems you have to solve and then tasking yourself to do a little bit of work every single day so you can start making enough progress that it builds momentum and gets people excited. Okay. What is what is the goal? Because when you looked at starting a club, it seems like you kind of not blase, but you did it without this like overall, you know, image in mind. Where is it now? Is it an academy? Is it? You know where where's where's the where's the Crowley effect going to come in for the Kingston Stockade? <laughs> the goal the goal was like I, I want to take my kids to a soccer match in Kingston. I want my friends to take their kids, and I don't want to drive two hours into the city. You know that 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 was that was it, right? And so I I kind of had pretty low expectations about it. It wasn't until the first tryout that we had where we were got together, and you know we we had we you know had some scouts come and, and help us bring people together. We looked around, and be like, holy. Sh 
like I don't know if I can swear. Holy yeah, crap! Yeah. There's 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 a lot of talent in this room. Like this is gonna this isn't just gonna work. This is gonna work in a big way because there's there's talent here. And then when we we first had our 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 first home game. It was a friendly, and I was so busy running around trying to set everything up because we didn't really have like a group of volunteers to help. So I'm just running around doing it all. That you, you did, we didn't realize, you know, at, at, until like three minutes into the match. Um, you turn around, it's like, holy cow, there's 800 people in the stands. Like, this is this is going to be a, a, a big deal. Um, so, like, you know, it just kind of sneaks up on you. We didn't expect it to be awesome. I also didn't expect it to be this thing that people use as an example. Like, oh, I, I want to build a club just like Stockade. I just want to do it in Rome. I just want to do it, you know, outside of Phoenix or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had these goals for our first couple years. Like, the, the, the number one goal was was qualify for the U.S. Open Cup. That is the club, that is the, you know, the, the thing that inspired us. I'm like, if we could if we could qualify that for that in the first five years and we qualified in our second season, I was like, wow. I mean, we got knocked out of the first game, but like, whoop, you know, that yeah, yeah. kind of showed us what we could do. And, and once you get a taste of that, all you want to do is get back to that. So I want to get back to that. I want to host a U.S. Open Cup game somewhere in the Hudson Valley because that would just be amazing. I do want to spin up a women's team. We're doing small experiments with the, with the youth team and youth academy. Like I, there's a lot to do. There's I, I, I imagined that we'd be further along because technically 2020 would have been our fifth season, but we didn't we didn't play. Yeah. Right. 2021 would be our sixth season. But like, I don't even know if we're going to have a season yet. Um so everything's kind of on pause, but we, we will we will get to do those things. Like okay. I look at this, I look at like stockade as like the, this is the thing I will work on for the rest of my life in some in some capacity. Like you just chip away at it forever. Yeah, yeah, uh, wow. beautiful. Okay, all right, we have so much more uh, to discuss uh, with Dennis Crowley. So come right back. Welcome back to the Cooligans Living Room FC. We are here with Dennis Crowley of uh, Kingston Stockade FC. And uh, there it is. Uh, yeah. he, put, he put on the jersey. How great is that? <laughs> I put my t-shirt into a jersey with the help of this. Help <laughs> um, so, the, uh, so one thing I wanted to uh, talk about uh, real quick on, uh, you know what? Let's, actually, let's start with Street FC because you are, we've had Kyle Martino on the show. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a regular uh, member of Street FC. I, I and think, I've heard of it. <laughs> okay. Alexis, he's seen the clips on Instagram. So not, he, not for me, but I like that it exists. Hit the like button, it's good. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> uh, but Street FC has been a really cool thing, and you, and you are uh, a part of it as well with Kyle Martino. Um, the 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 level, I, I'm sure you know, having started a, a, a soccer team uh, is, is helpful when getting a lot of knowledge. Uh, not only that, but like having that platform and experience from the tech world. Because one thing I love about Street FC, genuinely. I'm not just blowing smoke. The app is great. It's very simple. You can find a game. You know where the game is. Yeah. It's easy to join it. Uh, you got to get in early because a lot of people can try to get in yeah, those, yeah. those games. Um, but the what has that experience like uh, uh, getting to form Street FC? Yeah, so I mean, I met Kyle when he was running for USF president, and um, you know, because I was a, a team member of the of the MPSL and was doing a lot of writing and stuff about it. And, you know, we just, we got to talking about a whole bunch of other stuff and he had pitched me on this idea that he had. And, you know, the way he pitched Street FC to me originally was, um, it's like Soul Cycle, but for, for pickup soccer, which is really like you, you're, you're a member of this club. Um, and when you're a member, you, you get to play games, you play pickup soccer games and we host the games, right? Like there's a ton of services out there that just like help people find pickup games. But the problem with most of them is that like half the games don't materialize, right? Like, oh, yeah. I signed up to play, but then only two people showed up. And it's like, why am I using this app if the, the games don't even happen? Mm -hmm. And so, what, you know, the service that we run, all you do is show up like you would to like a soul cycle class and all the gear is there, is someone there running the game. Uh, we make sure that you're playing with people on your skill level. We make sure that people are adhering to the, the rules. I, I make sure to show up to street FC games wearing my cycling pants, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, they get, you, you better get used to this because I'm going to nutmeg. 
leg right. you into the We own a lot of leggings, and they are <laughs> it's, loose in the front if you catch my drift. It's mad because like it brings out all these different types of people, right? Like Kyle is a five-star player. I am a one-star player. And so if you think about the technical hurdle of like, okay, you've got you know 5,000 players in, in New York, and you want to spawn games at different times, but you need to make sure you spawn them in the right place, and you're able to get the right amount of people that match up, and so it's a good game, but you're still able to fill all the games. Like it's a it's a logistics challenge. Like yeah. you know, in the same way that Uber has a challenge, like where are the cars at the right time to make sure everyone gets picked up? Street of C is the same thing. So it's like, it's super fun to play and it's a really interesting technical challenge. And when you solve it, you, you get people together for, you know, an hour or two hours and they're having a time of their life. So it's- yeah, yeah. It, yeah. One thing I do enjoy about that, like uh, the, sometimes a different level of, of player, because sometimes, you know, you'll, you, could, you could show up to a game and then like, Cal Martino's passing you the ball, and you're like, yo, I just, a U.S. men's national team player, just, I'm just doing some one twos over here. Yeah, I think my app is broken. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, man. That's amazing. Uh, great. And so we built all this stuff in. So you rate people as well. Well, Kyle was much better than I was. And he yeah. would rate me and be like, oh, Dennis is much worse than I was. And, you know, the system is designed to kind of balance itself out over time. Yeah, yeah. You know what? This is my, my uh, one suggestion for Street FC. I haven't, I, I should have mentioned this to Kyle. I think the, you should use futsals instead of regular soccer balls. Why? Because there's some games I play yeah. and some of these guys are so good. Some of the women too are yeah. so good that I'm like, all right, you need to slow how you fast you're passing the ball to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I need the, you know, I need to let, I need some lead in the soccer ball to just. So you want to take down. a weighted ball off the chest, is what you're saying? <laughs> all right, Christian. But usually a football, a football stays on the ground. Usually, it rarely bounces up. That's my suggestion. Maybe, not, maybe not all the games, but some maybe, of the maybe games. Maybe we suggest a one-star game for you then, <laughs> instead of a five-star. Game. How dare you insult me on my yeah. television show, Dennis? Yeah. <laughs> we actually added in one star, Dennis. Just said negative stars. You didn't hear. That. Yeah, you're probably you're more like a three star. I'm still, I'm still a one star. I, I no, it's all good, man. Right? It's it's genuinely great. Right? And you did mention uh, having met Kyle uh, when he was running for U.S. Soccer uh, President. We also uh, that's where we had him on our show when he was running. That was like. That was huge for us. We were like, we had yeah. one of the candidates on our podcast talking yeah. about what he wanted to do. And it, even when I first spoke to Kyle and, and, and really talking to him about what, how he wanted American soccer, what he wanted it to look like in the future, yep. um, that, having that conversation with him, it was kind of inspiring. And, and I think it probably led to, you know, you being more passionate uh, about it as well, I would imagine. And you were involved in a, in a lawsuit with U.S. Soccer to really to try to institute promotion and relegation. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was a while ago. I don't remember all the sort of details about it, but if uh, do, do you want to talk a little bit about what that case was and where, where it really stemmed from and why you pursued that? Yeah, yeah, we we um, we filed a uh, request for arbit uh, request for arbitration with the Court of Arbitration of Sport, which is like that's the that's the world court that oversees all sporting stuff. So they oversee like the Olympics and. Uh, in the World Cup and, and you know everything else that goes under it. I'm just picturing like a floating uh, office with a round desk and a glowing orb in the middle. <laughs> I always pictured it like the Hall of Justice for the Superman. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Superman and Wonder Woman hang out yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, if you're yeah. guilty, the floor just breaks out from underneath you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in Jabba's Palace, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we, we really like, we, we had gone and, and, uh, and, and filed this request and said, hey, listen, if you look at the, the PDF rule book that FIFA sends out to all of its, its member clubs, uh, it states that, you know, um, you know, federations are required to have a system of promotion relegation in order to, you know, to play under the, the larger FIFA ecosystem. And, you know, we, we basically just raised our hand and said, if you look, the U.S. does not adhere to those standards. Can you provide some clarification as to why the U.S. is allowed to not do that where the rest of the world is required to do that? Um, and, you know, this was a case that went on for like, I don't know, it was for two months or so. Like I, was, I just went and, and reviewed the decision just before we got on the call here. And because I'm thinking in my head, gosh, that was that was so long ago. But really, it was in it was in February of of um of 2020 so it was less than a year ago that that decision came out and then all the analysis around the decision which 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 was was done but basically fifa struck down uh, i'm sorry the court for arbitration of sport um 
they 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 decided against us and they said listen it, it, it's fifa fifa can do whatever they want and if, if that means that fifa wants to enforce the rules in the u.s but uh, I'm sorry, wants to you know, enforce the rules all through Europe, but doesn't want to enforce them in the US, then that's their right to do so. And that, that seems wrong, in my opinion. And now you start to see this stuff with the Super League things that are happening all throughout Europe. And it's like, well, that's just like, I feel like our decision in the inaction that was taken has led to some strategy about like, well, what else can we get away with elsewhere in the world? Let's, let's do this non-promotion and relegation league uh, all throughout Europe because it, it's, it's, you know, they're, they're not gonna um, police it in the United States. So I don't know how all of it's gonna unfold. I do know that our involvement in that has kind of wound down and that, and, you know, now the decision was handed last, last year, but it's interesting to see the repercussions of that um, extend, um, you know, e even to today. If you're, you know, it, it, I'm not even trying to play devil's advocate, but if, the, if you watch the conversation on Twitter unfold as these things happen, there are some people who say, well, fine, if MLS doesn't want to do it, it seems like USL is in prime position to have some type of promotion relegation with their three tiered system, yep. uh, MPSL and some of the other leagues has that. And maybe you can't answer specifically, but you personally, I mean, maybe those conversations have happened. Maybe you can tell us, maybe you could break that news here or just what are your thoughts on something like that? Is that even feasible? Because it's such a big country. Um, it, it is such a big country, but there are certainly, it's not like there, there is no plan to do it. If you follow pro rel Twitter for 24 hours, you will be exposed to eight different competing plans of how to break the U S into component chunks so that we can have a tiered system like the UK does. For example, uh, there's no shortage of plans. The problem is, is that like in order to, in order to choose a plan, to commit to a plan and to execute on the plan, you need leaders to do so. And the leaders for soccer in the U.S. is the USSF. And the USSF has shown over and over and over again that they are just not interested in doing this. And so they, they can't, you know, they're not going to help. They're not going to provide any sort of vision, leadership, or timeline. They're not going to hold leagues' hands and bring them together at the same table. Like, there's nobody to do it. And so in the absence of nobody doing it, the leagues have to kind of do it on their, on their own. Like, MLS isn't going to work with anyone else. USL is trying to build their own thing. Like, will, will NISA work with, uh, with other leagues? I think they're open to it. Is the NPSL want to work with other leagues? Sure, we're open to it. But, um, you know, it's, it's very, um, towards the middle and the bottom parts of the pyramid, it's all about, like, survival. Like, let's just keep these leagues going as long as we can. And then once things are stable, then we'll put them together. Um, but without, like, leadership incentives, like, some, some form of, of vision and inspiration and assistance from the top, from the USSF, it's just, it's really hard to do. Yeah, this. Uh, uh -huh. You know, but when I think of, uh, I hear this, and I think of the 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 COVID uh, testing and vaccine rollout, where, where we had no federal <laughs> guidance. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh, states, figure it out. You sort it out. Uh, <laughs> Best and, of luck, buddy. Here comes the truck with vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a it's a perfect analogy for this stuff. Like, you need someone to like at the top to articulate the plan, to put it together, enforce it, and and a whole team of people to help do it. And it's just. We're just not seeing it happen, you know? Yeah. Wow. We got more with Dennis when we get back after this. All right. Thank you again to everyone for joining us, uh, watching today's show. Thank you so much to Dennis Crowley uh, uh, for joining us as well, uh, uh, you know, sharing some wisdom uh, from the tech and soccer world. Uh, and agreeing to, to start our startup with us, which is great. <laughs> 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 Lawyer <Okay>. up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's our, that's our next business. Lawyer up, baby. Uh, it's, it's babies that are. OK, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to see your parents? <laughs> is that milk too? hot <laughs> then is, is there anything uh you want to uh let people know about before we sign off yeah I, I gotta go through the list of shameless plugs first of all thanks for having me on the show this is super fun like the most fun thing i've done all day all month um, thank you you know if, if anyone has any questions and wants to talk soccer stuff or tech stuff or whatever um at dens d-e-n-s on instagram and on twitter uh, if you're interested in, in what we're doing at Stockade FC, um, at Stockade FC, Instagram and Twitter, and StockadeFC.com. Uh, Street FC, 
Uh, you got to come out and play. Like, we're still kind of winding it down. We want to wind it up again soon, as hopefully, right, as people are getting shots in their arms. Uh, that's at Street FC. You can download the app on the App Store. Uh, and then, uh, hey, if you're looking, if, if you're dreaming of putting a team in a league, like, look at the NPSL. Fourth Division Soccer is where it's at. Super fun. Love to see you there. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, we see some more games uh, this uh, this year. We haven't gone. We've been we've been wanting to go to Kingston to, to watch a game. I'm hoping the sooner uh, no, the sooner the better that we get to do something like that. And I know you you guys you guys do um, well. You have guest announcers uh, for games. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 So this is we were kind of talking about that a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. We would love to do something like that. It'd be so so fun. That'd be great. Put it in my notebook, so I do not forget. So that, all right. Nice. Sweet. Love that. Be great. <laughs> uh, okay, everybody. Uh, yes. Uh, make sure to support Dennis and uh, Kingston Stockade and Street FC. Make sure you follow us at Soccer Cooligans uh, as well on all social media pl- platforms. Uh, follow at Fubo Sports and subscribe to the Fubo Sports YouTube channel for full episodes of the program. Uh, all right, Dennis, let us end the show uh, the way we normally do, as is tradition. Uh, so thank you again for joining us. So for Dennis Crowley, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And together, what are we? The no. <laughs> Do you really felt we were going to trick him? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was waiting. I was like, you have to do it. You have to do it. <laughs>